Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I got some info I want to give you today. The camera angles right today. All right, so um, I guess first part of the lesson. Let's go take a look at this uh, small block Chevy. All right, guys. So how to identify where cylinder one is on an engine block, especially on a uh, on a on a V6 or a V8. So uh, we need to know. Um, the numbers of each cylinders. So how you tell is the cylinder that's furthest forward, which would be this side, is further forward than this side. So this would be cylinder one. Now on a Chevy, it would go one, then the opposite side would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. Now another thing you need to know is when you take a motor apart, you're supposed to uh, number the rods as they come out. I don't know if you can see it too well, but I believe this one has a five stamped on it. Usually I mark them on the side, but this has numbers on it already, which these numbers I think are the material the rod is made out of. It's an aftermarket rod. It's either a scat or an eagle. Another thing that's interesting, interesting about rods, they have uh, this little part of the end right here where my thumb is. That is for balancing, so they all weigh the same amount. So if you put them on a scale and say uh, you go to the, you find the lightest one, and then you can grind the ends to make them all weigh the same amount of weight. On the piston, piston has an arrow on it, showing you where forward is, how it goes in the engine block. Also, this one is an aftermarket, and it says .030. That means that this isn't the standard size piston was bored 30 over. Another thing we need to know is if you look on the rod, how it's got a little bit of space there. It's called a chamfer. It's cut at a 45 degree angle. And then we have a flat side. If we take a look in this hole here, we can see our crankshaft journal. Now that crankshaft journal is pretty large. It has two connecting rods that go to the same journal. So we're going to have two rods that have to get side to side. Sorry if I'm making you all dizzy by moving this camera so much. All right, so we have two rods that go on the same journal. So we take the chamfered edges, that would be this edge, has to face the crank. And then there's a flat side. This would be our flat side. So when they go on, they got to be flat side to flat side. Chamfers go out. So we have cylinder four here, cylinder five, and they would get mounted like that with the arrows facing the for forward on the engine. How do you tell what's forward on the engine and what's back? We have the crankshaft snout that our harmonic balancer goes on. And if you look on the back, that is where our flywheel or flex plate gets bolted to. So this would be the back. So the back of the crankshaft has a um, place to put the flywheel or the flex plate. And the front is where our gear and our timing chain and all that other stuff goes. One more thing before you put a piston in. So you got to make sure that your rings are all in the right spot. So our rings have a gap. So we got to make sure that our compression rings... are not lined up, that we have those 180 degrees from each other. And then we got to uh, find our gaps on our oil ring and make sure they're not lined up. Usually I like to go every 90 degrees on our oil, wing, on our oil rings before we install them. All right, guys, I think that's enough um, info for you today. You guys enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you next time.